Stan Jabalisco here um, to describe the difference between charge and voltage in terms of absolute versus relative. I was thinking last night, is there a such thing as an absolute standard for voltage? And the answer, I think, is really no, there is not. Voltage is called potential difference for a reason. It's a difference between the amount of charge on various objects. Whereas electrostatic charge can be defined in absolute terms. In other words, there is an absolute reference point for electrostatic charge. Consider an object that has a certain number of atoms. They can be all kinds of atoms. They don't have to all be the same. Just a bolus, if you will, of, of atoms. And you somehow or other have a machine that can count up the total number of electrons indicated as negative uh, charge here, and protons, which have a unit positive charge. And suppose that they turn out to be equal. The number of electrons, let's just call it N sub E, equals the number of protons, N sub P. That, that's the kind of writing that pharmacists love, don't you think? You can hardly read it. N sub E equals N sub P. The number of electrons equals the number of protons. So the actual absolute electrostatic charge on this object, call it Q, is zero. That thing is electrostatically neutral, and there's no getting around it. Its, its electrostatic charge is zero. So if you want to talk about a, the ideal common ground, suppose our whole planet Earth were electrically neutral. Now, we don't know that it is, but suppose that it were. It would be the ideal ground, absolute charge of zero. But if you have a machine that can count up the number of electrons and count up the number of protons and you get different numbers so that N sub E does not equal N sub P, then you do not have a electrically neutral object. It is electrostatically either negative or positive. If it's negative, uh, then you count up the number of extra electrons and divide by the constant called a, cu a coulomb, and you get the number of coulombs of negative charge on the object. Whereas, consequently, you can do the same thing with positive. If there are more protons than there are electrons, then you have a positively charged object. Now, all this sounds just trivial at first thought, but really it's rather deep because electrostatic charge is absolute. You can define an absolute standard for electrostatic charge, but you can't do it for voltage, not really. Let's suppose we have another object. I'll draw that object here. Another bolus. But this particular bolus has a different amount of charge on it than the first one does. It could be either more electrostatically positive or more electrostatically negative. Let's just make it positive for kicks. Each one of these little symbols, by the way, maybe stands for a trillion protons or a trillion 
electrons. If there is a difference in charge between these two objects, and you take a voltmeter and you connect the negative terminal to one of them and the positive terminal to the other one, assuming that it can go either either way, like in the most digital voltmeters can do nowadays, you're going to get a voltage reading. The voltage uh, generally indicated as or abbreviated as E. <clears throat> I'm not. I'm, I keep forgetting why that is. Electromotive force, I guess, is why they use the letter E. But it is a potential difference. It's relative. We call it voltage. And it is relative. I'm having a devil of a time with this pen. It's every little button that doesn't want to be pushed gets pushed. That's just the law of the universe, though. <clears throat> Things will go wrong if they can. But never forget Jibalisco's axiom. If something cannot go right, it might. Maybe this video will go right. I hope so, because... This really is a rather profound concept. Voltage is a relative quantity. But electrostatic charge is absolute. And they say there are no absolutes in the universe. Well, there certainly are. Any object that has an equal number of protons and electrons has an electrostatic charge of zero and that is an absolute zero there's no way you can argue that it's anything but but a potential difference is something entirely different it's always relative potential difference or electromotive force or electrical potential uh, is something that uh, the, re the word potential means that if it has the potential to create current. If you connect these two objects with a conductor, the charges will eventually become the same. They may not both be zero, but they'll eventually equalize. And that equalization process will involve the flow of electrons, either from one to the other or the other to the one, and that, of course, is current, electrical current. So that's how <clears throat> we define all these things. And I was just thinking about that nonsense last night and thinking, you know, I'll bet a lot of people are confused by this kind of thing. There are absolutes. They may uh, wonder, are there absolutes? Do, have you ever wondered that? Is there a such thing as an absolute in the universe, in electronics? And the answer is, oh, yes, indeed, there is. That means there's hope. That means there's a rock in the stormy sea of uncertainty that makes up our universe. It's not altogether uncertain. But anyway, remember the statement. There are no absolutes is in itself an absolute statement, thereby proving that there are, in fact, absolutes. There are absolutes. And one absolute is the fact that Stan Jabalisco, your professor-in-chief, writes about as well as any doctor could possibly do on a prescription pad. Until next time, so long.